Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome all of you to our live revival service tonight. I want to thank you for joining us. I believe God's going to do something amazing. We're so excited about this time of worship and the Word. And believe God's going to meet you where you are. I want to encourage you to do something. As I've been praying about this, I feel like I need to encourage you to do two things. Number one, I want to encourage you to raise your expectation level. I know you may not be sitting in this room with us, but I believe that the Spirit of God that is here is with you also. And I believe in the time of worship, God's anointing is going to rest upon your life. You're going to encounter His presence. And as the Word is being proclaimed, Brother Dane is going to proclaim the Word in power and truth. And I just believe that Word is going to be a healing, delivering, renewing Word. I believe it's going to be a Word in due season for you. So as you receive that Word and you're watching online, I just want to encourage you to let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart, touch your heart, and change your life. When this is all said and done tonight, we're going to have a revival time. And it's going to be revival that takes place here in the sanctuary, you in your home, in your car, your work, or wherever you are. God is going to meet us because this mighty God we serve is not limited or confined to a building, but His presence is manifested anywhere and everywhere that His people will pursue His presence. So I want to encourage you to go after God. Let the Holy Spirit touch your life. We're going to have revival tonight, and God's going to do amazing things, and we're going to see Him do great things. As you watch this service, I want to encourage you, if you have prayer requests or needs that you want us to pray together, at the close of this service, we're going to pray of every, over every need that's been posted on the comment section, so we're going to pray in agreement with you. Let's pray together, ask the Lord to just move and show Himself to us in a mighty way. Father, we thank You for the privilege to come into Your presence. We thank You, Lord, that Your Spirit is with us, that, God, You dwell within us, and God, as we come into this place and we begin to worship you, that you inhabit our praise. And that, God, you're our audience. You're the audience that is with us. And you're that one that is with each one that is worth watching on Facebook tonight. I believe for you to move in a mighty way. I believe that everything is done is going to be done through your spirit. I thank you, Lord, as the words are preached and the, the words are sung, that there's going to be an anointing and a power that is just going to permeate everything we do. Lord, we just invite you, come and be with us. Meet us, Lord, and touch every person that's watching tonight. I believe that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go after God as we worship him now.
matter what you're putting on that, you're moving, God. I think when we don't quit, God, we know that you're working in this place. So, God, we just invite your spirit to come. Wherever we are, God, we invite you to come in our homes, Lord. We just ask, God, that you just have your way. Remove the old, God. Remove the old. Remove the new. And just meet us here.
Let's make that declaration tonight. The heavens are open. And nothing hold back the kingdom of God. Tonight, Lord, you're going to pour out your spirit. You're going to send a healing word. You're going to make yourself known to people all around this world, Lord. Because you have given us the privilege and the opportunity to use this media tonight. And we just believe that people that are watching this program live, Lord, that your spirit is moving. That you're healing the sick, setting the captives free. Lifting up the discouraged, binding up the brokenhearted, believing for you to move mightily, God. We thank you, Lord, for an open heaven. We thank you, Lord, as we meet here tonight, that even though people aren't in the room with us, we are like the centurion that said, Lord, just send your word. Send your word even now. People are healed and filled and delivered and encouraged and strengthened in the name of the Lord. And God, we believe for that. We believe for you to make yourself known in a powerful way. So, Lord, we just come before your presence with a desire for your presence to be with you and for you to be with us. Have your way, Lord. We believe for it in Jesus' name. Receive our worship as a sweet incense and let it fill your presence. Hallelujah. As we worship the Lord tonight, I just want to encourage you to continue with your heart open for the word as we prepare to receive the word. I believe God's got a powerful word. Before I ask my good friend Dane Hall to come and speak to us tonight, I just want to invite all of you. The Lord spoke to my heart and said, you know, during this time of differences and not being able to meet together, this challenging time that the gift of evangelism, the gift of the evangelist, is not having the opportunity to preach. And so tonight I invite Dane to come and speak. And I just want to invite you, if you believe in the gift of the evangelist, if you believe in that ministry, I invite you to give tonight. Uh, anytime during this evening's service you can give, you can give at AbundantLifeBryant.org and just hit giving there. Our people, you know how to do that. I also have a text number I'm going to give you and if you would like to bless Brother Dane. Anything that comes in tonight will be directed toward him. So I want to give you that opportunity. The text giving number is 501-386-9973. Once again, if you'd like to text and give, it's 501-386-9973. So I encourage you. I believe that as God blesses you, that you should bless others, and we want to bless our evangelists and enable him to continue to do the ministry that God has called him to. Thank you, worship team. You did an awesome job tonight. I appreciate you guys. I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for a word from heaven, a real rhema word for all of us tonight. So, Brother Dane, we love you. We invite you to come and join us. I invite you to join as he preaches his word. God's going to speak to your heart. Thank you, Pastor. It is a delight to be in church on Wednesday night. And I hope that uh, all of you have your Bibles ready. Word of God open to share what God has for all of us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Al, for inviting me to come. I appreciate the opportunity. I love to preach. God called me to preach many years ago, and uh, I have uh, tried my best to fulfill that calling. I've done other things in ministry, but uh, I know that I know that I know that God called me to preach. And so I appreciate the opportunity to share the Word of God with you tonight. If you... Uh, have a need. If there is something that you would like to have us pray about at the end of the service, would you please share with us in the comments something that we could pray about? And uh, Pastor Al and the rest of us that are here tonight are going to be uh, praying together over the needs that are that are sent in tonight, and we're believing God to do some great things in our lives. I think I'm preaching right now to eight human bodies <laughs> in the building but that is nothing new for me I'm accustomed to preaching to small crowds because when uh, when they hear I'm coming they just uh, they leave by the thousands but we are uh, very excited to be with you tonight I did preach one time years ago when I was an evangelist before I went to the office years ago um, I preached for Alton Garrison when he was pastoring at North Little Rock at First Assembly he invited me to come preach for him and I told him, well, Brother Garrison, I want to, but I don't normally preach in churches that small. 
And of course, that church ran hundreds of people at the time, but I was giving them a hard time, but we had a good time anyway. But I think that the Lord is going to speak to us tonight. Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8. And uh, we will begin reading with verse number 18. And before I begin reading that text, we're going to read several verses of Scripture. Before I begin reading that text, I don't have to tell any of you that we live in a time that is more unprecedented and uncertain than ever before. We've never been here before. Human suffering seems to exist everywhere we look. There's physical suffering. Just weeks ago, most of us had never heard of coronavirus. Many did not even know how to spell pandemic. And in just the past few days, tens of thousands of people have lost their lives. There's physical suffering. Some people that just a month ago were the picture of health have now lost their lives or they are fighting for their lives. There's not only the physical suffering, there's the emotional suffering that goes with physical suffering. People around this country are prohibited from seeing family members that are dying. It's an emotional thing. Many people are going through those times of grief and saying goodbye without actually getting to say goodbye. There's relational suffering, and that's the one I'm suffering with the most right now. Thank the Lord I don't have the physical problems, and thank the Lord the emotional issues are not there. Some would argue that, but still. There's, I have problems with the relational suffering. I've been staying, or my dad's been staying with me some, so I get a chance to visit with him some. But the church has been greatly affected by the relational aspect yes. of not being able to get together. God's people are not made for social distancing. We're made to be together. Uh, and in every relationship, a major expression of love in every relationship on, a certain, on every certain level, uh, there is that expression of love with physical touch. And we can't do that. It's no different in the body of Christ. When you come to church, you expect to shake hands. You expect to hug somebody, get a pat on the back, or at least a fist bump. We can't do anything like that. Our fellowship has been halted. What's, what's fellowship? Fellowship, for those that may be watching and don't know, fellowship is just a good churchy word for getting together and eating. We like to get together and eat. It's a vital part of Christian relationships. We like that. I want to go somewhere after service tonight and, and share a cheeseburger and, and, and visit with somebody. We can't do that tonight. Then there's the economic suffering that many in our country are going through. So many people are fearing for their financial futures. I just saw in the news before I came over tonight that food lines in this country are very long and a lot of people are unsure how they're going to feed their families. We're living in an economy that is shaky at best. And let me just pause right here and say, if you get your stimulus check, that's not the time to go buy a new television. If you get your stimulus check, that's the time to pay your bills. Yeah. Because the landlord and the mortgage company are not going to forget. They might forgive for a little while, but they are not going to forget. You're going to pay that sometime. So pay the bills with your stimulus. But after everybody gets their stimulus check, we then have to face the fact that someone's going to have to pay for the stimulus. We're on shaky ground. This whole world has become familiar with suffering as of late. We are doing everything we can to prevent suffering, and yet pain still exists. And in such settings, the promise of God still rings true. No matter what the setting might be, the promise of God still rings true. This promise was not meant for just everybody. This promise is intended for the people who Paul said have put to death the misdeeds of the body. People that have received the spirit of adoption and are now the children of God, which allows them to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Paul said, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign in his glory and share in his glory. He therefore, Paul could therefore write to us in Romans chapter 8 verse 18 and say these words, for I consider... If you're reading that in King James, I think he said, I reckon. He was from Arkansas. Yeah. 
I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's enough to just stop and take a praise break, if you will, and say, thank the Lord, no matter what we're walking through right now, we are suffering. Yes, there are difficult moments. Some of us are without jobs. Some of us are going through pain. Some of us are caring for loved ones, even with, either with or without the coronavirus, whatever the case might be. Some of us are going through difficult times, but the present sufferings that we have right now are not worthy to be compared to what glory is revealed in us. God has something special, whether it is COVID-19, whether it is a problem in your family, whether it is a, a physical, excuse me, a physical sickness, a financial hardship, whether it's a struggle that you're having over a decision that you must make, whether it's condemnation over past failures or anything else, life is sometimes not pleasant to face. But I have good news for you this evening. If you will get up tomorrow morning and every morning determined in your heart that you will do what Paul said in Romans 8. You will not always be immune from pain or from suffering. However, you will find that the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. Yeah. Paul tells us in these verses that follow. Let's read them. Verse 19. The earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits... For the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does, hope, why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance." Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes or makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yes. Now he who searches the heart knows the, what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yes. These verses of scripture that we read this evening tell us, Paul tells us, that there is just a whole lot of things going on that cause us to just groan. <laughs> yes. He tells us that we, he first says in, in verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's enough to stop and have a shouting fit. And then he goes on to hit the 20th verse and say that we're groaning. We're groaning. Now, there is a, it is very, very possible, it's, it's likely many times in our lives that you can be free from condemnation and simultaneously feel like groaning. What does that mean, preacher? What does groaning mean? To groan means to make a deep, inarticulate sound in response to pain or despair. And I got news for you. If you're alive you will groan at times. Yeah. I got even further news for you. The older you get, the more you will groan. Because it's a deep inarticulate sound in response to pain or despair. So you get up some mornings, you don't feel it, you say, oh, and you want to pull the covers back. You're groaning. That, that's what people do. But Paul tells us that there's a whole lot of groaning going on in these verses. He said, the entire creation groans. <laughs> creation groans in response to pain and despair. Paul compared the suffering of that creation, the entire creation, that suffering of creation is compared to that of a mother giving birth to a child. Now at that time, Paul's audience, especially the women of his audience, 
had a very clear understanding of labor pain because mothers bore the full brunt of the pain of childbearing without the conveniences of pain blocks or epidurals or that sort of thing. So they understood. And that's the kind of pain that Paul described being in the world today as a mother giving birth to a child. And it makes me wonder sometimes after hearing the stories, why does a mother ever have a second child? It is because of the end result. She knows that if she can just endure the pain, the pain will soon be exchanged for indescribable joy. Hallelujah. An entire creation is looking to an end of suffering but only as the world turns to Jesus Christ can there be any end to any suffering. For it is He that said the words and made the promise, those that endure to the end shall be saved. Verse 20 yes. tells us this. The creation was subjected to futility or frustration by the will of the one who subjected it. Now that's kind of... That's a lot of words there. The original sin, the original sin that Adam uh, committed affected all of creation forever. The original sin of Adam introduced pain. Yes. It introduced suffering. It introduced sickness. It introduced such things as thorns. <laughs> it introduced natural disasters. Weather tragedies. Why? Because sin brought imbalance and chaos that will never be perfected on this earth until all things are made new. Yes. It's no wonder creation groans. We make those indescribable sounds that come from pain or despair. But I want you to understand this tonight, friend. There is coming a day very soon when this chaotic world is going to be put back into order by the hand of an almighty yeah. God. Yeah. The earth, First Peter says, the earth will be purified by fire. John says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah says the wolf and the lamb will lie down together. Oh, creation longs to be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. What are you saying, preacher? Paul said creation longs to be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Creation longs, all of creation longs for the peace of God that the child of God possesses in his life. Yes. Yes. And yes, the entire creation groans because of the original sin of the first Adam. But I'm here to tell you today there's only one person in the word of God that the Bible describes as a type of Christ. His name was Adam. Adam is the only person that the Bible, word for word says, who was a type of Christ. Because the original sin of the first Adam, the creation groans. But I'm here to tell you today, the first Adam caused the original sin, but the last Adam has completed what the first Adam could never do, and in fact has reversed some of what the first Adam actually did. The longing of creation is to be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God, and that is only accomplished through the last Adam, Jesus Christ. The first Adam was made in the likeness of God. The last Adam was in the image of the invisible God. The first Adam was a living soul. The the last Adam was a quickening spirit. Under the first Adam, all die. Under the last Adam, all are made to live. The first Adam partook of a tree of knowledge that brought death. The last Adam partook of a tree of death that brought life. Under the last Adam, all have sinned. Or I'm sorry, under the first Adam, all have sinned. Under the first Adam, under the last Adam, all are made righteous. Under the last Adam, under the first Adam, sin abounded. Under the last Adam, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. One day soon God will recreate this world. Nature will be normal once again and the children of God will receive their full inheritance and reward and then the groaning of all creation will be satisfied. Amen. 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 All creation groans. Well that's creation. Praise God I'm saved. I don't have to worry about that. No, 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 no. Paul said Christians groan as well. That's what he said in verse 23. 
creation groans and the child of God groans. Verse 23, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. That means the down payment that the Spirit has put in us of the glorious life of Christ. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. You know, the Christian life is the best life. But no believer in Christ is immune from sufferings that come in life. Sometimes we just, we groan. There's stuff, there's, there are things. Sometimes we groan because of our own sin and stupidity and foolishness. Have you ever done something and said to yourself, why in the world did I do that? Or have you ever done something or, or thought something and said, what was I thinking? I wish I had a room full of people here today. I could really. But I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> At other times, we groan because of the physical suffering that we endure. I know just as sure as I'm standing here that Jesus is the healer. Just as sure as the word says he forgives all of our iniquities, it also says he heals all of our diseases. I don't understand the timetable of God. I don't understand the clock of God's providence. But I do know that it always strikes at the proper moment. Amen. There's healing. We groan at times simply because things just go wrong. You ever been there? Things just, it seems like things go wrong all at once sometimes. One thing happens and the next thing happens. It all goes bad, it seems all at once. Sometimes it happens in seasons. Life has taken me on journeys that I never wanted to travel. And sometimes I look back on it and I hear myself groaning, just wanting the Lord to come and rescue me, hallelujah, from this world of despair. There have been times that I've even prayed. I prayed for the rapture and there have been times I prayed to die. Say, well, you're not very spiritual. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> that was the groaning within me. But I want you to understand, I can truly tell you today, through all the stuff, through all the junk, through all the good and the bad, I've never given up on God because yeah. even in times of despair, we can know that not all is lost. Verse 24, for we were saved in this hope. What hope is that? That we await the adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. Yes. Listen, biblical hope is not the same as what we consider hope in the modern English language today. When we say we hope something happens, that means it may or may not happen. But when the Bible talks about hope, that is more of a certainty that something will happen because it is based on a firm foundation of faith. That's why you hear uh, Paul telling Titus that the rapture of the church, he referred to it as the blessed hope. Yes. It's not just something that may or may not happen. We know that it's going to happen because that is based on a firm foundation of faith. Yes, the groaning comes from pain. The groaning comes from desperation. But at the same time, it is not a hopeless groaning. It is a groaning that we are groaning in faith. We are groaning in hope that this life that we live is going to get better. And then this life that we live is going to co be consummated at the throne of God. And we're going to see Jesus. Verse 25 says this. We hope for what we do not see. We hope for what we do not have. But not only do we hope for it, but we wait for it patiently. Yes. We wait for it with perseverance. Now, if we are waiting for it, that means that we expect it. I am, ex I am groaning with things that are going on in my life. You're groaning with things that are going on in your life. But as you are groaning, it is not a groan. There are different types of groanings, I believe. There's some people that groan, and then there are other people that say, oh, yeah. 
there's a difference, friend. We can see that it's all going. We groan with that hope. That hope is based on faith in God. If we are waiting for it, that means we expect it. And as the child of God, as Christians around this world are groaning, it is that cry of faith that there is coming a moment when this temporary body will experience a change and it will be resurrected and it will be redeemed, I'm telling you, I cannot wait to see Jesus and this body will be redeemed just like my spirit has been redeemed from sin. My body will be redeemed from sickness and pain and all of the things that the enemy has brought into this world through sin. So, all of creation groans. Because of the pain and the sorrow. The Christian groans at times because of the desperation that we sometimes feel. We feel helpless sometimes. We feel like we can't do it. That's why we groan in faith saying, God, we're expecting you to do something. But then there's something else that I noticed in verse 26. Verse 26, Paul tells us that the spirit that is within us also groans. Now, why would the Spirit, who is the, who is the part of the Trinity, why would, he, why would he be in pain? Why would he suffer? Why would he be in despair? Well, you see, the Spirit of God is groaning through us. As a child of God, hear me, we have two intercessors. Obviously, the book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus intercedes for us at the right hand of God the Father, he ever lives to intercede in our behalf. Jesus intercedes for us in heaven. But when we got saved, we were given a measure of the Holy Spirit residing in our hearts. And that Holy Spirit intercedes for us from the earth, from within us, from within our spirits. And then when we got filled with the Holy Spirit, those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, there's just an overflow of that spirit residing within us, flowing into us, through us, and from us to the rest of the world. And here's what Paul says. He says in verse 26, he knew how finite, how human, how carnal, how, all, all the, how imperfect we are. So he said in verse 26, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Some people say, well, I, I, can't, I can't host the Holy Spirit in my life just because I'm so weak. No, the Holy Spirit is there to help us in our weaknesses. Yes. He said these words, We do not know what we should pray as we ought. We don't know what to pray for. Have you ever found yourself in this situation? Oh God, I just don't know how to pray. I have really prayed. I have said those very words as it relates to the COVID-19 situation. Because... Yes, God, I want your healing power to sweep across this world. But God, if this is something that will lead people closer to you, so be it. So I just don't know always how to pray. But Paul said, we don't know how to pray for, what to pray for as we ought. Those groanings of those words that, cannot exp that we cannot express are the Spirit of God praying from our spirits. When you just say, oh God, I don't know what to say. And those groans of agony from the depths of your spirit. Do you know, it may just sound like desperation to you, but it's connecting with God because the Spirit of God intercedes yes. through us yes. with groanings which cannot be uttered. Those groanings that words cannot express are the Spirit of God praying through us. So when you get to your point of desperation and you just say, I don't know how to pray, then open your heart to the Holy Spirit and just begin to cry out to God. Yes, there are times when you must use words. There are times when you must intelligibly speak to God and talk to God about your needs. But then there are times when you just don't know what to say. And that's the moment Paul says, we do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. He intercedes for us and through us on earth as the Christ, uh, the Son of God, intercedes in heaven for us and through him. For in us there are groanings which cannot be uttered. Yes. Who better to know the heart of God than the Spirit of God. 
and the Spirit of God resides in us. The entirety of creation is groaning for the glorious freedom of the children of God. The child of God consistently groans for our adoption as sons and daughters and the redemption of our bodies. And all the while, while creation is in shambles and groaning, while we as believers, though we're saved and we know that we have this hope that in Christ, we continue to groan because of the sufferings and the things that we walk through. And all the while, there is someone living within us that is able to connect us to heaven without one word being spoken, but just from the groaning of our hearts. And we get on our knees and we begin to cry out to God and say, Oh God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to pray. Holy Spirit direct. And that's when that groaning spirit begins to travail, uh, prevail rather in us. And God begins to move in such a spell. I was there just not too long ago. I've been walking through a season. And it's one of those days where I guess last Monday it just kind of all piled up. I was expecting one thing and another thing happened and I thought, God, you just you just have forgotten me. <laughs> yes. I know some of you would have never thought that because you're so spiritual. <laughs> and I didn't really believe that, but it's just kind of what, uh, God, what are you doing? And I said, oh God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to pray. What's going on? I know all things work together for good because that's the next verse. We didn't read it, but that's the next verse. And... Uh, I said, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how, I don't know what else to do. And I was, uh, I believe it was the Lord. I was driving down the highway with my dad. He's been staying with me some because, long story, but he's had surgery and went through a storm before the surgery and a tree fell on his house and he doesn't have any furniture. So that's just a lot of things. And that's all, that's all part of it. And I was driving up the road on the highway and I was praying just kind of to myself while I was driving he's sitting over there on the other side of the car asleep and the words and the tune to an old old song that they sang at Azusa Street came back to my mind I'm not going to ask you guys to sing it because you won't know it oh spread the tidings round wherever man is found Wherever human heart and human woes abound, let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound, the Comforter has come. <laughs> and I begin to, I couldn't even remember all the words. I begin to roll that over in my mind and in my heart, and I'm sitting there, and those chill bumps started growing on my arm while I was thinking. You see, no matter what we're going through, there is a Comforter that has come, and He's here to help us in our time of difficulty and despair, even when we do not know how to pray, the Spirit himself intercedes with groanings which cannot be uttered. And I began to pray, and I began to just pray to myself. He was over there asleep, so I just began to pray. I said, God, you know. God, you care. You understand. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit just gave me one more reassurance after another as I was driving down the highway that he has it all under control. I don't have to figure it out. I can just trust him. I can trust him. He's faithful. Yes, he is. Tonight, I'm sure that some of you have already sent in your prayer requests. We want to pray for you. Can I tell you that Jesus is the greatest friend you will ever have? This has been rolling in my heart and in my spirit all day long. The Lord just brought me to this scripture in the last couple of days to share with you that this world is groaning. This world is making those unintelligible noises that, cause, that come from pain and desperation. But not only is this world groaning and not only are we groaning to be free from it, but there is someone in us who is groaning. There's someone in us who's interceding and it sounds like groaning but it's actually touching the throne room of God. So let him speak through your heart. Let him pray through your heart. Let him pray and you be that willing vessel that he speaks through. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, you can be filled right there where you are. God can speak to your heart and he can minister to your life today. 
I want to pray with you. I, I won't be able to ask you to lift your hands. I won't be able to ask you to, to show me what your need is, but I can pray and ask God. And as I pray, you can pray. And we're going to believe God. And then pastor is coming back and he will pray as well. But I just want to pray that God will help you and that God will strengthen you. And that that you feel that you just can't seem to release, just go ahead and release that and let the Spirit groan with groanings which cannot be uttered in your life. Father, speak to us. Meet with us, Lord. There are needs that have been sent in and pastor is going to come and pray. I ask you in Jesus' name to meet every one of those needs and I pray that you will speak to us as this whole world groans, Lord. Help us to realize that the last Adam has come to repair what the first Adam has done through bringing sin and introducing sin into this world. Help us to understand, Lord, that we are groaning with not just with sadness and sorrow, but we groan from within us. We groan with faith, knowing that you're going to make things perfect. And we are going to allow the Holy Spirit to groan within us and to intercede within us with groanings which cannot be uttered in Jesus' name. Take us from groaning to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Pastor's coming back at this moment, and we're going to believe God for some great things to happen, miraculous things to happen as a result of this prayer time. Dane has given us a powerful word. Tonight, as I listened to him preach, I felt in my spirit to tell you that are watching, you need to cry aloud. You need to lift your voice. You need to just groan because it is from the groaning that will lead you to the glory of God. I'm reminded of the two blind men that sat on the roadside and as Jesus came by, it said they began to cry aloud, Jesus, Jesus, you can heal us. And everybody told them, be quiet, be quiet. But their need was greater. Their desire and their passion was greater than the resistance they were experiencing. I believe right now, if you will cry aloud wherever you are, if you're in your car, if you're in your house, you may be at work, you may be with friends, but be unashamed right now to cry aloud with me and just say, Jesus, we need you. We need your healing power. We need you to show yourself to us. We need you to provide for us. We need to have the peace, the comfort, the assurance of knowing that you're with us. And you just begin to cry aloud right now. Just lift that name of Jesus and cry out to him. Some of you have shared needs and I'm going to pray with you. But maybe you didn't share your need with me. But you share your need with God. And you lift your voice right now and you say, in Jesus' name, I am healed. I am filled. My needs are provided. My family is protected. My heart is restored. We're going to pray together. I want you to lift your voice. Be unashamed. You may be sitting with some people right now. And you may be thinking, well, if I cry out, what are they going to think? Who cares? Is your need greater than your embarrassment? Then cry out and say, Jesus, I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Let's pray together. Father, we cry out. We cry out. We lift our voice in the name of Jesus. We lift our voice and believe for healing. We lift our voice and believe for deliverance. We lift our voice and believe for provision and protection and peace to just cover your people. We lift our voice tonight, and Lord, I lift up Kathy Faulkner. She needs healing in her heart. God, she needs a touch from heaven. I pray, God, send that word into the hospital, and her heart be strong, and she'll have a restful night and a restoring night. I pray for Lisa Durline's cousin, Pam, that you will touch her in that intensive care area, that you will strengthen her. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done for Thomas Carpenter. I pray for the completion of that healing for him and for Greg Mundus and so many other, Lord, that are suffering from this virus. We lift them up, Lord. We believe that you are a healer that heals all manner of our disease. And, God, it doesn't matter what virus it is. It doesn't matter what disease it is. You're the healer of all. And, God, we declare that word to be true. God, I pray for Barbara's brother that you would touch him in mind, body, and soul. I pray, God, lift him up and help him. He needs your touch on his life. I pray, Lord, that you would lift up Michael tonight of that terminal illness. Lord, you can heal him in his body. You can touch him in his mind. I thank you for it. And, God, for every person that shared a need tonight, God, send your word out. Speak your word. Show yourself mighty on behalf of those that have cried out to you. God, I pray right now, send your word. Lift up the brokenhearted. Set at liberty the oppressed. Pour in the oil and the wine of your presence. Be the provider. 
God, there are people tonight that they don't know how they're going to pay for their food tomorrow. They don't know how they're going to pay for their bills this month. I pray, God, show yourself mighty on their behalf. God, you're not just a God in word only, but you're a God that demonstrates your power among your people. And so, Lord, as we have preached your word and we've worshipped you in spirit and in truth, we believe that you will send your word out in power. And, God, I believe as we close this time tonight, you'll just make yourself known mighty. I believe it, Lord. I believe. I see so many people here from all places around the world and states. And, God, I just believe that everywhere that people are reaching out to you, that you're making yourself known. You're meeting people in their living rooms. You're meeting people in their cars. You're meeting people at their work. You're making yourself known. So, God, as we close this time out tonight, just make yourself known in a powerful way. Let the people know that you've heard their cries, you've seen their tears, and you've revealed yourself in power. I pray God bless you, reveal himself to you, and keep you. Let's close this time out tonight with one worship song. And as you're doing it, don't turn off right now, but tune in to God and worship one last song and let the Spirit minister to you. Let's do it right now.
declare that right now. We declare that every chain is broken. The curse is broken. That tonight in the name of Jesus there is an army that is rising up and declaring victory and glory. And it does not matter what is going on around us. It does not matter what the circumstances are, whether they be physical, whether they be economical. It does not matter because you are greater than every situation we're going through. So we declare tonight we are going to groan until we see the glory of God. We're going to cry aloud and we're going to see your glory. And God, I just believe tonight that you are making yourself known. Pour out your spirit. Send your word. Make your power known among your people. And God, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. And those chains are falling off. In Jesus' name. I want to speak this over you tonight as we close. God's protection is on your family. God's provision is for your needs. And God's peace fills your heart. As we finish this time, this new season, this challenge that we're walking through, you will be better and you'll be stronger. Because you're going to learn how to cry aloud to God. You're going to learn how to groan until you see the glory of God. And you're going to realize the Spirit of God lives within you. We love you. We appreciate Brother Dane preaching for us tonight. We pray that it's stirred a revival in your hearts. Now go forth and live for God. May his face shine upon you and give you rest and peace. In Jesus' name, thank you for joining us.